I'm saying that our, we have got to produce our own manager. I think that's I think that's the bottom line of it, Chris. We've got to produce our own manager. International sport has got to have meaning. Welcome to the latest edition of World Cup Confidential. England may have left Qatar and this World Cup, but we haven't. And over the next 20 minutes, you will hear Sammy Mockbelt explain exactly why Gail Southgate is thinking about walking away from his England contract. Chris Sutton warns England fans that they must think carefully about the way they treat their national manager in the years to come. Every action has a consequence, warns Sutton. While we will also hear Martin Samuel refuse to waver from his view that Southgate's replacement must be English. And yes, that would rule out one of the leading candidates, Brendan Rodgers. Morning, Sammy. We'll, we'll start with you first and we'll start with Gareth Southgate and Gareth Southgate's future. Um, you've written about this before. Now we've heard the England manager talk about his future. He suggested to us after the game uh, the other night against France that he may well be on his way um, before long. What is your latest understanding of where exactly we are with the England manager and his next move? Sure, obviously, uh, as you mentioned, Ian, I think you know we've we've written it um, a couple of times. But obviously, before the World Cup, that, that there was a decision to be made. He finally come out publicly and and pretty much admitted that. Um, so that's where you know that's where it is. I think we go. They go away now. They return home. They should all be home. They will dwell on it. They will analyse for the next couple of weeks and then uh, Gareth will, will, will meet with the FA primarily with John McDermott, uh, I think the technical the, the technical director. And that conversation that they have um, will form the basis, I think, of um, where Gareth goes with this. Um, he he spoke openly after the after the game about potentially lacking the energy to go again. He also spoke about the, the, the ramifications in his head of that, that game at Wolves uh, where they lost 4-0 to Hungary earlier this summer and, and, and the booing and the, 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 the reaction that he got from supporters and how that's kind of rankled with him a little bit. Um, so yeah, there's a lot to think about for Gareth and it's a big decision that really yeah, the FA can't afford to get wrong and, and, and Gareth can't really afford to get wrong. Well, if he was going, if he's going to meet with the FA and talk about it, it sounds like there might be some chance that he might be able to be talked round. Martin, with situations like this, um, normally you go with your instinct, don't you? Uh, or people go with their instinct. And from Gareth's body language, the way he was talking when we were standing with him on Saturday night, his instinct seems to be telling him to walk away, doesn't it? I, I, look, Lado, you know that I've been saying this like for months now that I think this is 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 his last tournament because th there is a logical there is a logical cycle to every uh to every manager's uh, job particularly with the England manager there is a point at which you're thinking um is everyone just fed up with me am I just you know is, is there what's in it what is in this for me and we can argue about what a, a good young team he's got we can say that the next tournament is only uh, no, and 18 months away, it, it, it's not much of a run at all. But in many ways, that's as much a, a negative as it is a positive because the man's getting no sort of recovery time, no thinking time. He's not getting a break at all. And it, it takes it out of you. There, there's no, you know, we can all... We can all say, oh, you could be down a coal mine. It's, you know, it's a lot more, you know, it, 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 you're managing football. What's not to like? But there is an immense amount of pressure uh, with the uh, with the England job. The man's done two World Cups. He's done a, a European Championship, much of which was at home, which increases the pressure, increases the expectation. I can completely understand how he feels perhaps a little bit burned out by it all. Uh, I, I, I don't blame him for that at all. And, I, and I've just thought long, long before, you know, you looked into his eyes on, on Saturday night after a massive disappointment when you're obviously his feelings about the job are, are going to be somewhat tainted. I thought from a long way out, this seems like the, the, the natural end. Chris, if, if it is, I, I don't think, I'm not sure it is a natural end. I think you're talking about cycles, given that we've got a European Championship in. 18 months, that to me feels like the end of a the natural end to a cycle, but um, only Gareth knows how he feels about that. Chris, it, it, it alarms me a little bit, or it alarmed me a little bit to hear Gareth talk openly about the fact that 
part of what is troubling him in his mind is the fact that he can't get that night at, at Wolves out of his head when they lost the report. Well, very poor. You've got to be poor to lose 4 0 at home to anyone, never mind Hungary. And he was booed off. There was then the night in Milan um, when they lost it to Italy in September. He was booed off again. Are we about to get what we deserve, Chris, as a nation? And if we are, is it time that we had a look at the way we treat um, people in, in you know, sporting office, for want of a better word? I don't know whether you're coming to me as a guy who, who was booed regularly as a, uh, as, as a player, Ian. Uh, you know, it's probably a different... Oh, well, and as a manager at Lincoln, briefly. Um, and but, as a husband and father, no doubt. Yeah, <laughs> and, and all that, of course. Um, no, it's, it, it's sort of ever since I can remember, that's been the way of, of England fans. And, mm. you know, football fans don't think... Uh, well, I'm not. I, I shouldn't include every football fan in in there, but you know, a large element of them don't. There's this sort of um, mob sheep culture where you know people follow within within grounds, and um, and, and that's what happened at uh, at Wolves that night. Um, slightly disrespectful from you towards Hungary, who have you know got some got some really good players, but you know they beat England well that evening. But uh, I, Gareth's a good guy and that would have hurt football fans. You know, every action has a consequence. And it, in those moments, football fans don't think. Um, and, and they didn't think that night. They don't, they didn't. I don't think Gareth uh, has been appreciated um, well enough with the job that he's done uh, over the years. You know, England World Cup uh, semi-final, Euros final. And now... Um, there are ways to go out of a competition and England played very well against France. And I, th I think everybody is looking at the bigger picture and, it, and in terms of, of what Gareth's future is now, I, I've just, my gut feeling tells me that he, he will stay on. It, it, it really does. Maybe his expectation and a lot of people's expectation, I think you were saying, it's, you know, it felt like it's the end of a cycle. Maybe Gareth wasn't expecting performances to be as good as they were off the back of the Nations League going into this World Cup. But the fact that England finished, look, it finished on a low, but in terms of the bigger picture on a high, you know, Bellingham being outstanding in this tournament, Saka really emerging. Um, there are a, a lot of positives. And maybe Gareth is thinking, how can I walk away from that? So while at this moment in, in time, I think we all understand how emotional he is. I think that Gareth is a good guy, and he'll be looking at the bigger picture. And 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 possibly, what if now? You know, th this feels like it's a squad moving in the in the right direction after the negativity uh, of the Nations League. So I I just got a gut feeling. Often I'm wrong, Ian, as you well know that he might stay on. Be lovely for you to be right for the first time this tournament, Chris. Um, Martin, I um. But you, I'll go back again to that, what you talked about, the cycle. And I actually said this to Gareth when, you, when I was standing there with you and others on, on Saturday, that, that it feels as though the, the team have progressed during this tournament. It feels as though he has progressed as a manager in this tournament. To me, the cycle, it would be, it, for me, it would work for Gareth to go to the Euros, which start in June 2024, take the team there, they'll have a chance of winning that competition. And, that, and then Walker, that's the end of his contract. Then he goes, everyone knows he goes then. And that also gives the, the FA 18 months to get a succession plan in order. Would that not make sense, Martin? Well, number one, I don't think it is. Um, it's not up to Gareth to make uh, the FA succession work. It really isn't. He, he doesn't owe the FA that. He's, he's done a good job for the FA. He's done three tournaments for the FA in six years. So uh, it, it's up to the FA to make their succession work. It's up to the FA to have a system good enough that we have other options as our managers without going abroad or, or whatever. And if we don't, well, that's not on Gareth either. That's not his fault. The other thing I would say about cycles is, is this. The natural cycle of an England manager is four years because it's two tournaments. And the first tournament should be the European Championships. And the second tournament should be the World Cup. Why? Because the World Cup's bigger than the European Championships. Winning a World Cup is bigger than winning the European Championships. We've got the cart before the horse at the moment. Um, and the way you break that cycle and the way you give the new manager a European Championships to work with and then build up to the World Cup is to make 
the change now if that's if that's what Gareth wants. It, it doesn't, you know, once again, if we go to the next European Championships, right, OK, mate, here's your job, two years, and we're into a World Cup. Well, that's that's not traditionally how it's how it's worked. It works that you prepare for your continental tournament first and then for the, the global tournament. Um, so that's how uh, that's how I've always thought of cycles. That's how uh, most countries think of cycles. Um, it, it's it's really hard to win a World Cup and then go again for the European Championship. I think France did it, uh, but they actually also changed managers. So all, all of these things. You know, if Gareth stays, I'm I'm delighted. I'm 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 probably one of the biggest Gareth Southgate fans as far as the media is concerned. I think he does he does make mistakes. I don't think he's he's perfect by any stretch of the imagination, but I don't know too many managers that are. So um I would be delighted if Gareth Southgate stays and I can see the argument for him staying and I think this is a cracking England team and I think it could go places. I just I just look at the guy and think there's a guy that maybe needs a break, basically. I mean, Gareth's first tournament himself was, was a World Cup and that... that yeah, um, I know. That's what was wrong with it, wasn't it? Did okay. Um, but that's, that, but that's, that, that's, that's the, 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 the cycle is, is about face. Yeah, Sammy. Um, what? What? I, I can imagine this being a very uncomfortable time for for the FA because we, as far as we're aware, they haven't got a ready-made replacement. I think, given the job that Gareth has done, I think they would particularly realise now that, in an ideal world, foreign a foreign England manager is not necessarily the way they really would want to go. Are, are, what are they going to do now, Sammy? Are they going to give Gareth a deadline? Are they going to say, look, you've got two weeks, uh, three weeks, a month? Um, what are they going to do? Because they've got a, they've also got a game in March. They've got a Nations League game in against Italy in March. So they, much as they will give Gareth the respect and the time to make his decision, they can't wait forever, can they? No, for sure. Listen, I think they will have the respect for Gareth to give him, you know, a couple of weeks, have Christmas, spend time with his family, and then. You know, you can see those discussions happening at, at some point in January because you're right, they've got a game in March. And in an ideal scenario, you, you want that that position resolved. So, you know, your, your new guy can come in. He can have a think about which players he wants to he he, he, want, he wants to select, his backroom staff. There's a lot of organisation to be done in that in, in that period of time. Um, so I've, I, you know, sort of reading between the lines, it'll, there'll be a discussion in January. Um, and but you're right about sort of the lack of the lack of candidates. Um, ideally, they don't they, they don't want to go overseas. Um, the, in my, in my opinion, the England job should go to an Englishman. Um, the two the two leading candidates for that would be would have to be Graham Potter at Newcastle, but I just can't and um, um, Eddie Howe at Newcastle. I just can't see a, a scenario where they would leave their jobs right now, um, which leaves the FA in a little bit of a quandary. You've got Brendan Rodgers, who who has his admirers there, but he would cost an arm and a leg to get out of uh, out of Leicester. So there's you know there's straight away you've got an obstacle, and then the two kind of um, high profile overseas candidates are Mauricio Pochettino and Thomas Tuchel, who I think would do a good job, an excellent job, and and and. The players would respond to their management style, but as I said, I think ideally we want an Englishman doing that job. And but at the moment, it doesn't seem to be. Uh, why, why do you why do you just want an Englishman doing the job, Sammy? Well, I mean, surely it should be the best, the best person out there. No, I, 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 I and I, I understand that argument for sure, but I think this is when you're on the international stage, it is the best of our lot versus the best of your lot. And that's 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 just my opinion. That's how I see it. We've and been if it's, the root of, and if uh, it's not, if it's not, what's the point? If it's not, it's club football. Sorry, Sam. Yeah. Going on. And you know, I think we've been down that route before with um, Sven Goran Eriksson. We know how that turned out. Fabio Capello. We know how that turned out. Um, and I think if you appoint an Englishman, and and this is not to suggest that Pochettino or or, or, or Tusha wouldn't be fully invested in the project. I'm not. I, I wouldn't suggest that at all. But with with an Englishman, you you, you would have someone who is instantly deep rooted in in that scenario, in that project. 
uh, and would have an affinity with with with, with the supporters. Um, again, that that's my opinion. But the, the problem, as we we mentioned, the FA have got is that there is that there isn't anyone who they would instantly look at and think, yeah, he's obtainable. Let's go for him, and that's and that's a massive problem. Martin, just just very quickly before I move on, because I've got to spend some time talking to Chris about Harry Maguire. Um, so just very, 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 very quickly, I know that you've written before that you agree with Sammy on that. You think it should be an Englishman. Just to split hairs, does would Brendan Rodgers count? Brendan Rodgers is Irish, but he's he's one of he's a domestic he's manager. Yeah. He's worked in the Premier League. Does yeah, Brendan it's, count? Look, it's a, it's a very difficult one that because so uh, I mean. I, I know you want to be. I know you want me to be quick, but it's a very difficult one because technically, uh, um, for for international football purposes, Brendan Rodgers is an English. Having said mm. that, the man has come through the English system. Mm. He's worked all his life in England, um, apart from a very brief uh, period north of the border, um, which, as we all know, Chris doesn't count. And um, so, <laughs> so, so, nice to have uh, <laughs> so. Um, <laughs> But but so we're, we're splitting hairs. You can argue Pochettino. You can you could argue anyone. You could argue, but Arsene Wenger, and there was no bigger Anglophile uh, than, than Arsene Wenger. When you ask him why he always refused the FA's overtures um, as England manager, he, he told you he was French because because I'm French. If I if I manage a, a national team, it will be France. And it is, I, I, I cannot get away from this. It's the best of ours against the best of theirs. And if we haven't got anybody, that's on us. It is not for us to go to Argentina's system or to go to Germany's system and go, actually, we've really messed up. So what we need is one of your coaches because we can't get out of jail with one of ours. That's not right. That is, I, I know it's not technically cheating, but I, as far as I'm concerned, for a country as wealthy and strong, as powerful, as influential as as it's cheating um we have got to produce our own manager and then it's the best of ours against the best of theirs and people say about the england women's team and stuff i regarded the england women's victory as wonderful for english football but it's an anglo-dutch victory because the manager was dutch and her staff are dutch so it's an anglo-dutch victory that it's their their smartness and our players point taken point taken um, can i just can i just clear that up yeah. brendan rogers uh if you Google him, he, he isn't English. Yeah, I know. That's I, I just start by saying that, Chris. I started by saying it is it is a, it's a problem because just, te- he's he's not English. But then again, if you Google Terry Butcher, he's born in Singapore. That you know, but but the man played all his life for England, and you know, no more English person than, than Butch. But you know, I, I get your point. I do get. Your I point. think um, I, I'll draw a line under this debate. I'm in charge, and I'll say well, he's, I'll, he's, I'll, Eng- he's English when it when it suits. Who, 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 who? Well, Brendan Rodgers Brendan. would be English if if, no. it, if it if it suits. Well, it's a difficult, you know, look, I, I know Lado is trying to draw a, a line under this debate and no one's mentioned Ronaldo yet and that's mm. disastrous. But, <laughs> but the, um, but the, but the um, commercially disastrous, but the, uh, but it, it, it's not English. It, it's not English when he suits. If you want, if you want to draw finite lines to do with national qualification, could Brendan Rodgers play for England? And if Brendan Rodgers couldn't play for England, you could argue then he can't be England manager. Yeah, um, but, 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 so, but, but you know, if, if we're saying it's okay for Brendan Rodgers, it has to be okay for Pochettino, right? Well, I'm not saying it's okay for Brendan Rodgers. I'm saying that's a very, very grey area. If I'm, not, if I'm anyone... not saying that at all. I'm saying that I, we have got to produce our own manager. I think that's I think that's the bottom line of it, Chris. We've got to produce our own manager. International sport has got to have meaning. And the only way it has meaning is if it's international sport, if it's the best of yours against the best of theirs. I've heard Jamie Carragher argue that the coach driver couldn't be uh, born outside England. You know, it's, it's got to be us from the, like, the guy that's loading the skip to the, the, the centre forward. And, and I think that's an interesting argument. If, I, if, people would like to, if, people, if people would like to press the red button, they can continue watching Martin and uh, Chris argue about this until midday, whilst uh, Sammy and I log off and go back to bed. Um, <laughs> Chris, we, look, that, that's a fascinating debate, guys, and it's one that we might come back to. Um, um, I, I can, as a, a host, I know, Chris, you, well, I know Chris, you petitioned for me to be removed as host a few days ago. Well, um, that failed, as you can see. We couldn't get anybody else to do it. Um, 
but I'm, I'm glad that you're with us again, Chris, because um, oh, you're on your you. own now. You're on your own in your apartment. But the, the, the other option was Martin Keown. That's right. I mean, you couldn't rely on him to use the technology more than two days running. Um, now, I know you're alone now in your apartment, Chris, rolling around. Alistair Bruce Ball, your um, Radio 5 um, best friend, has gone, has, has gone home. I, don't know well, I, like, I, like, I like all the commentators at Radio 5. I'm not just going to single out Ali Bruce Ball. Yeah, all the commentators are available. Um, now, you've had a lot of time to think, clearly. Harry Maguire, I think, has been sitting on your conscience um, oh, these last few yeah. days. Um, in the, today's Daily Mail, you've been asked to give uh, ratings out of 10 for all England players. And I wonder, I was, I was thinking I might just look at Harry Maguire and see a bunch of flowers and a note of apology underneath his name. But we see 7 out of 10 for Harry, which is the same as you gave Phil Foden. So there we go. It's official. You were wrong. Yeah. Harry's, been, Harry's been an unqualified success in this tournament. Yeah, you are so much better than this line of journalism. This is this is petty, 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 petty journalism from you. You will not let the Harry Maguire bone go, will you? Yes, listen, going into the tournament, I'll have to explain myself again. I, di I didn't think Harry Maguire should have been in the squad because of his lack of football at Manchester United. He didn't perform well the previous season, but he has performed well. And this is, this is you know, a testament to Gareth, another good decision. I gave him a seven. You know, maybe it would have been an eight or nine had he picked up Giroud and just just really locked onto that cross. So I think he had a had a solid tournament, more than solid tournament. That's why I gave him a seven. I was trying to get the washing machine working in my uh, apartment at that particular time when I was doing the ratings with uh, with Kieran. So you know, I wasn't I wasn't giving this deep deep thought, and I should have done because I. I knew you would be petty enough to pick me up on this. You obviously failed oh, to get what? the wash. You obviously failed to get the wash machine to work because you were in the same clothes that you were in the last time we were on this show. By the way, um, can I just can I just say I, I think Seven's quite generous. I mean, oh, he's a centre half. He's centre half, and, and was it seven for the match or seven for the whole tournament? Tournament. Se seven for the whole tournament. Seven. Seven for the whole tournament. Yeah, I, I think it's fair. I mean, if it was a seven match rating, I think that's quite generous because Shiru gets in front of him uh, for for France's winning goal. So you know, I have I to say, that's, Chris, I think that's uh, fair. All all joking aside, all pettiness aside. Uh, I thought that was a terrific performance by Giroud um, on Saturday night, and um, we might come back to that later in the week because he's been another figure who's come from there the other one. Sorry, is there another one of these? Oh yeah. Uh, oh yeah. Sadly, yeah. Have, a, have a look in the small print of your contract. It's, it's um, the flying Dutchman of video yeah. shows. It, it just yeah. goes around the world, never ends. Just never ends. Just tales around the world. This show, you know. Have a have a look in the small print of your, of your contract, Kish. You'll be alarmed. You'll yeah. be alarmed by quite a few things in the small print of your contract. Actually, <laughs> not just not just that. Um, Sammy, and um, we've got before we wrap up, um, and trying to bring this back to some kind of serious debate. Um, another player who has actually come from not nowhere to have a good tournament, but has come back out of the shadows was Marcus Rashford. Um, you know, he wasn't even, Gareth essentially wrote him off from being in his squad last summer. And he's, he's he, he came back, he's come here, he's done well. Eric Ten Hag overnight, the Manchester United manager, has compared him, compared him to Kylian Mbappe, which I think is probably generous. But there is still this link between Rashford and PSG. Um, it's not gone away. Where, where do you see Rashford now and, and, and the future? I kind of presume that now that he's back in, in full gear, he'll stay at United. But what's your take on that? Yeah, no, I, I agree. And I think, I, I think he will sign a new contract at Man United. I, I, I've, I've reported on the PSG links and they definitely, they're definitely interested. Who, you know, I'm sure there are a number of clubs interested. His, his contract does expire at the, as it stands, does expire at the end of the season. But I think United will trigger at the very least, trigger a 12-month option that they've got to extend that period. So there's no real danger of him being able to sign a pre-contract in January. But I think I think Rashford and his advisors will probably use the PSG uh, interest as leverage, perhaps, to, to, to get what they want out of United. Um, he's back on form. He's playing well. He's scoring goals, you know, at club and international level. United are not going to are not going to want to let this Marcus Rashford go, particularly given you know the, the importance that United have of, of players coming through the system, and he and he's the one 
tangible footballer that they've got that had really. Um, so they they'll pull out all the stops to keep him. And if I was a betting man, I, I think he would. I think he would send well, up signing a new deal. United will not want to let let one of their best players go. Um, we are about to let one of our best players go because Sammy, that's the end of your World Cup. Um, you're on the flight home tonight. If you can find your passport, which I've hidden somewhere in your room. Um, but you've had a great tournament. England have had a good tournament. Chris, you're continuing to have a you know a modest tournament, but it's time to get better because we're going to see you again later in the week. Martin, you're staying as well. Can't wait. Um, tomorrow, um, we'll talk about the things we didn't get around to talk about today, such as Lionel Messi, Argentina, and the football that still remains ahead of us at this World Cup. Guys, thanks for joining. Everyone, thanks for watching. See you the same time tomorrow for the next edition of World Cup Confidence. Thank you.